I'm really, you know, on the other side of most of the people on this panel because I'm kind of the instigator. I'm kind of I'm the artist, the filmmaker who has a passion about an idea and is desperate to have some kind of footage or music or something in their film that they can't let go of and and call for the help of of some kind of legal aid and in, in you know allowing this to be in the film. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. And at the same time I'm also on the other end because we do sell portions of our films to um, other filmmakers, and so we are also on the end of, of wanting to get some kind of compensation and protection for our own footage. So we live on both sides of this issue. Through the years, um, I think a lot of the issues have changed for us as filmmakers, and I thought I would start by showing a piece of my partner Penny Baker's film, Don't Look Back, which is a film about Bob Dylan's 1965 concert tour. I don't think it's cool to be an anarchist. It's cool. No. I'm sure. I don't think it's cool. What's missing here? Filmmakers may know. Which, yes, exactly. It's it's you know your ten minutes of music credits and and such and you know publishers and everything that you see at the end end of films nowadays. You know things have changed and evolved greatly since then. I mean within the film. Um, there's, see, there's a scene, I don't know if any of you have seen Don't Look Back, but there's a scene where um, there's a party and, and Donovan kind of comes in and joins Bob Dylan and you know, he's very much in awe of Bob Dylan and you know, he's brought his guitar of course and, and uh, you know, he sits there and he plays a song for Bob Dylan and uh, you know, at that point, that time, uh, we didn't even bother to clear that song because you know, he was just playing in it and um, that was seen more as, you know, part of the art of the film and you know not something that you had to get in the rights to although you know the the songs that Dylan sang in concert we did get the rights to at that time but other pieces of music that today would be you know very controversial if you didn't clear them um, you know were just kind of left as you know that's you know just a given I think you know technology the advent of, of you know tape audio tape the event of cable market, um, everything, you know, there became more markets for things and more value for things. And, you know, it's proceeded to today where um, songs that 10 years ago we may have, might have paid $1,000 for now are, you know, 7000 to $10,000 for the same piece of music. So it's become very much of a business for filmmakers. And um, because of that, it, it's caused a lot of problems. The next piece is a piece um, from a movie called Depeche Mode 101. They had bought this music box, I think, in Times Square, and it was playing uh, Rain Drops Are Falling on Your Head. And uh, we could not get the rights to that song. We could not afford the rights to that song. Um, and so we changed the song to London Bridges Falling Down. And we had to kind of edit it in the scene here, you'll see. <laughs> Next are some examples of things that we just claim fair use and used. And um, there's a piece from the War Room where um, Ross Perot's campaign, uh, Ross is quitting, and he ha I think he's playing a Patsy Cline song on television. It's a campaign that cost at least $60 million. <laughs> There's a piece from Depeche Mode with the kids uh, who we also filmed uh, that were following their tour are on a bus with a cartoon on it. We claim fair use. We cleared that music though. And then there's kind of a, um, and Martin playing a video game. We also claim fair use. And then kind of a montage sequence that we used it in that's probably a bit questionable. Route 66, all right, I'm down with that. If you plan to motor west, 
<laughs> They're posing as the band. <laughs> this in really as as a piece of um, Monterey pop um, because uh, we sell footage of Janice and Jimi Hendrix um, quite often from this film but quite often um, people just use it and I'm putting it as an example of uh, what often happens for uh, news stations or you know commercial television like NBC um, will use this footage for some piece that they're doing and they their lawyers have said that you know basically they don't even bother to clear the rights for it they just wait and see if the filmmaker finds out and comes after them and then they'll just negotiate it from there on your film and your art is valuable to the filmmakers and and especially uh, and musicians as well um, you know art is not funded very well in this country and um, you know we certainly have stayed alive as filmmakers and have been able to continue making films by selling and owning our films and as different mediums come out such as video or DVDs or cable television by um, able being able to um, sell them in those markets it's a very complex issue, especially being on both sides of it. And, you know, we, uh, all I can say is that, you know, there has to be a kind of fairness about it. Um, I mean, artists, you know, have to make a living as well. And I think, you know, art needs to be somewhat protected. Um, it, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's different than a lot of other, you know, trademarked or, you know, items or you know what James is talking about um, at the same time I think we've always dealt with a kind of openness um, in terms of our work plenty of people through the years have um, copied uh, the card scene and don't look back don't look back starts with Bob Dylan holding up these cards that have the words of his song on it and I'm sure you've all seen it in movies like Bob Roberts um, you know bands have done their own versions of it. We've never gone after any of those people. There has to be kind of a sane way of looking at things. Um, you know, I also take the view, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, it, there's just too many restrictions, you know, there's no going to be, there's not going to be any documenting of our culture, and that would be a very sad thing um, to come. And you know, I think we get very close to that when everything gets so litigious about every item um, that you can't have some kind of freedom of expression about things, about ideas.